Hi guys, um, it's a cold Auckland winter's day, so I thought I'd do this quick review on this new Roby uh, multi-tool I bought a few um, a month or so ago. Um, basically, it's out of the cordless uh, multi-tools at Ryobi. This is the the dearest. It's about 169 New Zealand dollars. I think it's about a 150 Australian dollars out at uh, Bunnings. Um, and uh, out of the box, it does not come with a battery, um, but luckily, as you can expect, it's part of the uh, Ryobi OnePlus tool so, uh, battery um, set for cordless. So that should be, uh, shouldn't be a drama for many of you out there. And, I mean, if you do need to buy a battery, you know, it's probably cheaper to buy a cordless drill and get a battery with it. But if you need to get one, I think this one cost me, with the charge, about $150. So almost as much as the tool itself. So I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, with uh, the tool, you get a plunge cut, uh, this plunge cut blade. Um, you get the depth gauge, um, this nozzle for the vacuum um, sort of extract, the chisel head, and a sanding head, hence multi-tool. Um, also, just a quick story. Before I bought this, I actually had bought myself a, a Zito, it's a corded one, I think it was about three, uh, 300 um, watts, so I thought it was pretty grunty, um, I thought well, I needed it for a bit of a job at home and I don't use it that often, so I won't invest too much money, I'll just pay the $60 and buy the Zito, so uh, to cut a long story short, it basically lasted me um, uh, a good um, uh, it only lasted me five minutes before the, the motor burnt out and I, re I returned it and got this. Also, um, interestingly with the Zito, um, the, it comes, the blades it comes with are timber ones, which in my opinion are not worth, uh, worth it. Uh, the finer tipped, finer, finer ones with the finer teeth uh, you can use for wood and um, steel so even with my El Cheapo um, Zito I had to go buy those blades for it because the um, the blades were useless so um, but Ryobi give you decent blades so that's that's a good tick of the box from Ryobi um, the only thing I'd say that uh, is a disappointing with the Ryobi tool is that it um, it does not come with a carry bag which if you can imagine for a multi-tool and you've got all these little bits and pieces to keep it's a bit of a pain in the ass and I've been keeping everything in this little silly little box that came with the thing so um, that's probably the only thing I'd, I'd moan about it with with this thing too besides you know it's a reasonable price you know especially if you compare it to um, Makita and whatnot it does come with it has it's the only multi-tool I've seen at least that has this adjustable head uh, feature so you can sort of take it to uh, 90 degrees to the to its body or you can sort of spin it around so it's got 90 degrees of motion um, and then also being a quick release so it's basically got this lever you can just pull it back and pull these out I won't do this one but you just pull these out and they they come up relatively easy um, uh, yeah, but one one warning, uh, this thing is quite solid, so make sure you don't have your finger and you snap it back, because it does, I whacked my, my fingernail the other day, and I tell you, it was not pleasant. Um, it's got a little magnet behind there that just sort of keeps that in place, because um, once it's passed, I think the 45, it's pretty much locked in. It's got a little shoe here. Um, that's the other thing, the Zeta tool um, was didn't have a keyless um, change so you had to use it a chucky uh, not chucky an allen key every time you want to change a plane which i can tell you um, when you're going around something and then you want to sort of change the angle is a real pain in the butt so um yeah and the one thing before getting this i didn't actually realize how great these things were um this uh i think it sort of sits in between getting like a reciprocating saw and a router and the sort of functionality you get um, if you're doing a lot of work around doors, architraves, skirtings, it's great. If you want to chop a hole into anything, it's great. Um, re yeah, really easy, um, relatively cut, um, uh, accurate. And I mean, the great thing, I mean, a lot of people laugh at the sand head in these things. It's, oh, I've already got a sand, I don't. But with this little head, it's bloody, uh, bloody brilliant. Because I tell you what, um, you can go there, chop out your bit of timber. Um, if you're smart, unlike me, you might chop it a bit short of the surface, 
come in there and just smooth it out with that. Um, and yeah, the sand has actually been quite a revelation. I, I didn't actually think I'd use it that much again because I've, I've actually got two, two sanders and I thought, well, you know what, I need a, a third one. But um, with this with this thing too, if, if you, I was working um, near our kitchen and the uh, sanding down the um, the door architraves around the door, and basically this bloody thing, it, it there was hardly any dust that came out of it. Um, and I'll tell you, I'd know because my wife would complain endlessly about it. And if you know, sanding that sort of fine, uh, fine dust is impossible to control. So um, yeah, that's good. So you can have one tool. You can go, uh, you know, chop out your your bit of timber, clean it up with this, snap on the the vacuum cleaner head, and this thing will suck. And it's got these little holes here, and obviously the vortex at the the vacuum cleaner forms, um, just sucks it through so greatly. And you can actually see, I sort of dusted off there, you can see this thing here, it looked like it was part of the coat of white, so it was covered in the, the, the paint particles. So that's actually brilliant. And uh, what Roby do too, they give you a whole bloody pack of these things, which I thought, oh, I'll probably get two or three of them. If it looks like there's half a dozen in there, which ain't, ain't bad. Yeah, I say, that's great, you can do that. You can switch your blades quite quickly and freely. Um, yeah, and uh, this thing too, like I said, the Azita really struggled, it burnt out. I uh, got this thing, went through the job. Um, I don't think I even used one bar battery for it. It was a reasonably big job and um, yeah, I just sort of cut out this sort of uh, real 1980s bit, bit of architecture that we had now, sort of doorway, I don't know, I'd describe it as a giant spice rack. And that thing sort of made mince meat of it, went through um, some really good quality New Zealand pine. Um, it was sort of 20 mils thick by about, you know, 150 deep. So yeah, it went through it quite nicely, no bother. Um, one thing I'd say with this depth gauge, it's best used with the uh, plunge cutter. And uh, the reason why you can see, uh, it's got this sort of, uh, I'll extend it out a bit. It's got this sort of ski boot shape and that basically lets you set your height there, and you can sort of see there, I've done it there when I cut through my plasterboard. Um, it's got the, um, it's got the increments uh, on the, on that, um, on the little stalk, but I don't really ever twist those, and I tested it again, so it's actually quite accurate, so I just measured it off the blade in um, yeah, 10 mils. Um, so if you want to plunge cut through plasterboard, that's fantastic. Uh, and um, it basically lets you uh, not damage any of the timber in behind this uh, plaster wall, but also if there's any pipes or electrical cable, um, I guess if you're a contractor, safety-wise, it's a great option just to have that there, and it's no drama, like I said, I don't have any others. And, you know, even with this, you could set this up and it can act as a guide. So if you wanted to, to do a, a, a cut along a piece of timber, like a uh, kitchen counter or, or whatnot, uh, you can set that, and then maybe you 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 clamp that down as something like a, a square or a bit of timber to, to and that thing there will give you a nice straight edge, which is pretty hard to do with the reciprocating tool. Um, yeah, and then um, what I would say is, so the 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 lever here lets you change adjust the angle of the blades um, so if you're working around something you're going to come around from this tack it from that angle you can do that pretty quickly you know dramas um, but also if you like like in the in the case of like a door opening when I was sanding if you want to sand overhead and so in other words you want to hold this tool oh shit sorry I didn't want so if you want to hold this tool um, above your head um, you can sort of hold it like that and, and get in above your head, no dramas. Uh, or if you want to sort of, in an awkward case, um, uh, hold it like this. Or if you, I don't know, there might be, you might be working in the back of a cabinetry and you want to get into the back and to, to gouge a hole for a cable or something. So it just gives you that extra option, which is, there's a few of the multi-tools out there that do that. Um, and then even like in this angle, I was working the other day and I was sanding quite low, I could adjust it so I was on my knees and without having to, um, bugger up your knees, you can get down low and, and, and chop and sand bits and pieces. That's a bloody fantastic, I think. Um, yeah, so um, no complaints. Um, I think it's a fantastic tool. 
and um, I, it's actually a lot more useful. I can see a lot more uses for it uh, than I uh, initially thought um, because it sort of sits, like I was saying, between a router and a reciprocating saw. So if you're needing to chop a baluster uh, or a post or something, you could use it. Um, you obviously don't get the, you know, you're looking at going through something like sort of 30 mils and anything deeper than that, you might have to attack it from four sides because um, you're obviously restricted by the depth of the blade there. Um, but yeah, it's brilliant. Um, it, it's, um, you know, this, the job I had it going for about an hour, used about one bar, never ever seized it, it doesn't overheat, nothing. Um, the ergonomics of it, you know, you can sort of, as I said, hold it like that. Uh, you can use the battery as a sort of, as I was saying, you know, um, when I was trying to, if you're standing overhead, as you, as you, if you know anything about um, orbital sanders, you need to get, you still need to put, apply a bit of pressure on them. So, you know, having that a hand on the back of the battery just gets it. It's uh, gets gets more out of that sanding job uh, that you have. Um, let's you put the pressure in the right place. Um, and you know, like I said, if you wanting to to go through the side, it's over here. You can you can sort of hold it uh, like that, and you. You know, the thing normally uh, being reciprocating wants to sort of wobble side to side. Gives you a good grip on it. You can get some quite good accuracy on it, I think. Uh, the other thing I'd say, uh, it's got a dial here. It lets you adjust the speed, I think, at 3.6. Um, if anything, it can be a bit of a pain in the butt because I have... It's quite easy to to to, to knock that. But, it's, again, not a huge issue. Um, but, yeah, very good quality. Um... Yeah, these plastics are quite hard. Um, the you know it's got a bit of a soft grip around the edge here, and you know, in the way right we do the batteries, they've got a bit of rubber around the side here, so it is you know they're very comfortable to hold. Um, and the other thing is, um, I believe I think it's a six-year warranty on the product. You've got a, a really strong line, so that's no drama. Once you do that, it took, took me five minutes, and it's actually um, quite a good thing if I think about it because you put my, if you lose your receipt or whatever, it's all uploaded onto a website, just take a photograph on your phone and you you upload it and it's, it works brilliantly. Um, and I think it's three years on the battery, six years on the actual tool itself. And they don't have any caveats about, like some other brands have, uh, that it's only for DIY use or whatnot. Um, so that's brilliant, um, good move by Ryobi. Um, so, you know, people sort of say that, you know, these aren't as good quality as Makita and whatnot, but, I think, you know, obviously they've got to have a bit of confidence in the product if they're putting it out there for um, for uh, six six years. And, um, you know, I'm sure a company like Bunnings wouldn't certainly make Ryobi sit, sit behind their product if, if they were in trouble. So, again, no concerns at all about that. Um, and I don't think buying a Ryobi multi-tool you're getting anything lesser than you could expect from Ken. I was just, you know, maybe... Makita, the motors might be um, better built or whatever, um, but uh, yeah, this doesn't seem to have any issues with that. It's not brushless or anything, but it definitely has enough grunt to do the job. Um, I'll try add some some video to the end of this with um, some other tool in action. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Cheers, bye.